Got all my gear ready to go. Gear's all ready to go. I'm at mum and dad's this weekend. Gonna go for a hunt. Probably about half past three, but I gotta help the old man um, cut up some trees first. Um, and then I'll get out for an evening hunt and I'm gonna stay out in the bush overnight. I'm gonna let out a couple cheeky roars and see if we get them going. It's been a bit colder in the mornings and I know the um, farm deer are roaring, so it might be able to coax a bit of noise out of um, some stags. So see how we get on and I'll keep you posted. A new chain on the chainsaw before we go out and deal to the fallen trees. This happens every time I come home. I come home to go hunting and I always end up out here fixing the old man's fences or shearing his sheep. And I suppose I can give him a hand, but I told him I'm leaving at 3.30 so I can get up for a hunt. So, yeah. Okay. Oh, whatever. Hey guys, um, made it out again. We've um, just finished chopping up firewood at the old man's place. He, he wouldn't stop talking to one of his mates, so it's a bit, bit longer to get out here than expected. Bit of a climb up into the hill, um, right at the bottom now. It only takes about 20 minutes to get up, but it's, um, it's pretty steep, so it's pretty hot. I usually only come in here for a morning hunt or an evening hunt, so I don't usually have a pack, but got a pack tonight because I'm going to stay in overnight. I've got a sleeping bag and a thermal mat. That's all though, it's not going to rain so it's going to um, push up in there. I've made the um, quick PVC roaring horn, a bit of baling twine tied around it and uh, I'm going to probably wait until it's a little bit cooler and then I'm going to let out a roar. I know it's still quite early but you know nothing, uh, nothing risked, nothing gained so Give it a go, might be able to um, coax one into uh, roaring early. See how we get on, hopefully find some wallows, just to um, keep a look out for next time, mark them down on my GPS and um, then we know at least where they are. Look for some fresh rubbings. And yeah, pretty hyped, hopefully I hear a roar. Um, but yeah, into it. I took my time getting to the top of the hill. Um, just having a really good look and listen. Hopefully you guys can hear me on the camera. Set a stag roll back to me, so bingo, this started to roll. It's right down deep in that gut down there, though, quite deep down in the gut, so not quite sure what I'm going to do yet. I'll, I'll give it a couple more minutes and I'll give it another roar and see if he's moved at all. But it's six o'clock, so I've got a couple of hours left. Well, I've had him reply to me about another three times or so. Um, I know he's just down in the... Uh, he's in quite a small area. The wind's not great, but what I think I'm going to do is head down into the gut. And then I'm going to, um, once I get down, because I know it's really nice and um, soft ground at the bottom, so it won't be very loud. Um, there's no um, dry leaves down there, so I'll, I'll get down there and I'll let out a couple of roars and see if I can um, 
get a better read on his position and then I'll hopefully go from there and um, maybe we can get a stag down um, this evening in the bush that'd be good found an awesome little wallow down in the um, down in the guts here and I haven't uh, I've given out a roar but I haven't heard anything back yet so I'm down by this wallow now so I'm going to give out another roar and hopefully the stag gets mad that I'm Whew. Well, that was awesome. So I roared that stag right in. He was only 10 meters away from me. Massive white antlers, eh? I saw the antlers way before I saw the stag. Oh, but um, I had his head right in the crosshairs. But there was just, um, he was, like I could, the crosshairs was on him. But there was a branch only about two meters in front of me that I'm pretty sure the bullet would have gone through the, um, or he would have hit the branch, so. Couldn't take the shot, but that's all right. It was absolutely awesome. And then um, I let out a couple of hind calls because he, um, I was stuck in a position where I could not get a shot at him, only like 10 meters away. And then I finally crouched down to see if I could get underneath the branch. And then um, just as I got into the crouch, I looked through the scope and I still couldn't have a shot. And then he, um, he took off, he let out a big grunt and shot off down. And um, I let out a couple of hind calls, and he didn't. Um, he didn't seem. Oh, he wasn't like running away real fast. He was um, sort of hanging around. So I thought he might come back around. Let out a couple of low moans. Went up into his um, where he was up in his pad, which is just down here. It's all torn up. You can tell he's been living here. And um, thought I'd let out a couple of roars, and he might think, you know, who's this bugger up in my spot? And he'd come up and um, come have a go at me, but. No, nah. so I stood around and I heard and I heard what I thought was him moving through the bush. Watched him walk all around me, um, only another 15 meters away, and then um, looked through the scope. Finally saw it cross in front of me, and I, uh, there was a hind. So it must have been one of his hinds that was with him, with him possibly. So um, you know, I don't just um, hunt for antlers. You can't eat antlers, so shot shot the hind, and uh, there she is. So um, yeah, beautiful fat hind. Um, she was just up here and she rolled down the hill. So I'll get to work um, cutting her up and um, I probably won't stay out here tonight. I don't think I'll stay out here tonight. I think I'll boost back, um, back down to the farm and hopefully get my old man to come pick me up. So yeah, awesome. All right, so. That always happens to me when I'm ready to do an overnighter. I shoot a deer <laughs> at night. So now my pack is bursting because I've got a sleeping bag and that. And I haven't boned the meat out. I've just hacked off all the legs, back steaks, taken the um, kidneys, the heart, the um, the eye fillets. Um, yeah, so she's going to be a big walk out of here. But um, it's now 10 to 8. So I'm hoping I'll be... Um, back by 9.30 latest. Yeah, stoked. Blood all over hands, smell like a deer, it's good. So um, yeah, good result for a um, Saturday night. Get home, I know there's a roast at home that I was gonna miss out on, so now I get some. Yo! Whew. All right, that was one of the hardest carries I've definitely ever done. Um, I tried to just beeline it out and I was just pushing through. So much scrub and you guys know when you've got a headlight on your head and you're trying to walk through the um, bush and the ferns are in your face and that it just reflects so it's quite hard to see where you're going and that pack definitely weighs 50 kilos at least. I'm going to try see if we got a, um, I think we've got some scales back at the um, parents place so I'm going to weigh it because I've carried 40 kilos a fair few times and I've never felt that um, unsteady on my feet. I, um, kept on falling down quite big holes um, and yeah I'd stand on things that would normally hold me and I just went through them so I've got a pretty big um, lump on my leg where a um, something that I thought was steady uh, came loose on a rock and I sort of slid down the hill and then smacked my leg on another tree so 
I'm going to be pretty sore tomorrow. I'm all cut up and bruised, but oh, it's it's all worth it, eh? When you got a pack full of meat. So I hope uh, I spoke to Ryan uh, um, O'Connor from the Stag Raw before I came, and he said he was getting out, and he said, uh, you know, good luck. Hope you end up with a heavy pack. And geez, did I what? It's a beautiful night though. Stars are shining. Just um, waiting for the old man to come pick me up. Um, <clears throat> I was in Dockland, but um, it's the place I go, I access through um, a, my old boss's farm, so it's a bit easier to get to, but it's still um, public land. It's just um, the way to access it, that's all. So um, a little bit gutted I didn't get a shot at that big stag. Man, it was, oh, I'm just pumped, eh? Roared in a stag and ended up coming out with a load of meat, so um, uh, probably Easter weekend, the next time I come down, and I'll uh, see if I can get onto that big stag again, but... Yeah, awesome. Woo! It's the next day now, and just gonna um, take the skin off the meat. Um, just been in the fridge overnight, and then we'll, um, cause we're heading back up to Auckland today. There's heaps of meat to take off, so. As you can see, see on Instagram, there's heaps of people um, getting some deer this weekend, so. That's awesome. So, um, have uh, this video up in the works, so I'm just still waiting on a screen for my new computer, but once that's done, We'll have um, this video up and uh, a few others, so um, yeah, looking forward to more adventures. We've got a hunt coming up with um, Alan Robinson at the end of the month. We're going to go into the Cartwackers, so stay tuned for that. Like the channel, uh, subscribe to it, and um, have a look in the description, and you'll see our um, all of our social network names. So. Well, the um, Stony Creek pack did its last dance last night. Strap started tearing out. And then this morning I realized, tore a massive hole in the bottom of the pack. So, um, less than ideal. And I guess I'll be uh, in the market for a new pack. Not sure what to get yet though, because I'm not made of money. Um, yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's a lot of blood. Oh, okay, would you like some? Yeah, but not, but not until it's cooked. Don't forget, put the little droppings up there, or oh, the deer isn't screaming because it's not live. Yeah. Oh, the flies can smell it, so they're coming in. Now, they, you, your job can be to shoo the flies, okay? Shoo. 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 Show! Show!